Hi guys, in this video, we'll be going through whether you should buy real estate right now in November or whether you should wait two months, three months, four months, five months. I know so many of you wondering, are the markets going to fall? The price is going to correct. Should I hold out until maybe early 2021 when it's going to be a better time to buy? So I'm going to cover this video in two parts. One, I'll be going around the country explaining what's going on in the price movement. In the second half, we'll be talking about inflation, RBA interest rate decision today. So you can understand what type of impact that will have on the market and make a decision whether you should invest right now or buy your property right now or defer that decision to three months Six months, from, six months from now. So if that is what you're looking to learn, watch right through to the end. My name is VK and I help people build passive income through property investment using data without using a buyer's agent. And this channel exists to help you get ahead through Australian real estate. So if you get value out of this channel, please hit the subscribe button, turn notification bell on. Most importantly, give it a thumbs up, give it a like. That way YouTube will give it to more people. Let's go around the ground. So nationally, what we're seeing, the monthly change, so it's not year, monthly change in dwelling well values between um, September and October is 1.49%. Now, just to give you some context, there have been entire years where the entire housing market has grown by 1% to 2%. This is happening still on a monthly basis, right? And the annual change is well over 20% now and the median value across Australia, not that it means much, is just under $700,000. Let's just go through this one by one. So Brisbane. So the monthly change has been 2.5%, which means that, you know, prices are not slowing down at all in Brisbane right now. The annual change has been 22% and the median value is 642%, $642,000, right? So you know, it's not like, you know, if you're wanting to buy in Brisbane, it's not like, you know, wait three months and then all of a sudden prices will start correcting themselves. That doesn't happen when you go from a two and a half percent month on month change. You don't all of a sudden start to see that become negative two or negative four. That never happens. It takes 12 months. It takes 18 months for that trend. There's such a momentum to turn itself around. <clears throat> Sydney. Similar type of story, although it is slowing down there. It was well above 2%. That monthly change earlier this year, now it's 1.5. Annual change is 2.5, uh, 25%. So it's grown more than Brizzy, but its monthly growth rate is slowing down. Median over a mil. <clears throat> Canberra monthly is huge. Annual similar to Sydney. Median not too far from Sydney. Melbourne's really interesting one, right? So it's not grown as much as Sydney. The monthly change isn't so hot. And the median value for what it's worth is, and this includes apartments and all that kind of stuff, is still well below Sydney. But for mine, there are better places where you can invest your money than in Melbourne. And let's look at one of them. So Adelaide, Radelaide, 20% growth. You know, so anyone who says that Adelaide doesn't grow, they just, you know, here's the stats. Annual growth rate is 20%. It is growing almost as fast as Brisbane and in fact faster than Sydney. I just proved to you um, month on month it's growing faster than Melbourne and Sydney and median value. I mean, check this out. And look, you don't even need to spend median value. There are suburbs un in Adelaide under 400K, around 300K, right? These are just medians. Perth is a really interesting one. So monthly change. And here's the thing, markets within markets. There are parts of Perth, especially on the, on the, the far south of Perth, that have risen literally by $100,000 over the last uh, six to 12 months. Yet this data says that its monthly change is negative. So you have to be very, very careful where you invest in any capital cities, but especially Perth. And, you know, the annual change has been positive. The median is around 500, but you can still get properties around three to 400. Um, just for completion's sake, <clears throat> Darwin, you know, it's growing, grown a lot, median under 500,000. We've not done any investing here. And Hobart's been a standout. You can see here, you know, that's gone from about 350 or 300 to about 650, 670 in about five years. It's been the best performing for ages. And in fact, more Tasmania in general as well. It's not slowing down, as you can see, monthly growing at 2%, which only three other capital cities were. And the annual rate of growth has been the best out of any capital city. And if we look at combined regionals, 
you know, the monthly change has been almost 2%. So anyone who says regionals don't grow, you know, once again, uh, this is just data. They have been growing. In fact, they've grown at a faster clip than Brisbane in the last 12 months, or even Adelaide, you could say. Um, they've grown almost as fast as Sydney. And the thing is that the median value 514, actually you can find so many regional areas for as little as 200 or 200 to 300, like Mount Gambia, for example, in South, um, South Australia, so many others as well. And you can get positive cash flow as well as the growth okay that's that's really important so the takeaway here from these stats before I go to the inflation stuff you don't need to wait on the sidelines when there's this kind of momentum behind the property market you know it doesn't all of a sudden flip the switch and start falling so yes it's hard to buy property right now yes it might be easier to buy property in six months time but in that time you know the average four hundred thousand dollar suburb will become a five hundred thousand dollar suburb most likely as long as you follow the data so the conclusion from this is that the momentum is strong. Buy now, don't wait. So now let's go into a deep dive on what's happening on the inflation front, on the interest rate front. Everyone thinks that interest rates are going to rise. That's going to cool down the property market. Prices are going to fall. Let's actually check out what's happening. Okay, guys. And by the way, if you're getting value, hit subscribe, turn the notification bell on, give it a like. So cash rate hold at 0.1%. So the RBA met today, first Tuesday of the month in November, decided, you know, steady as she goes. So here was the statement by <clears throat> Governor Phillips. So at the meeting today, they decided to maintain the cash target rate at 10 basis points and the interest rate on an exchange settlement balance at 0%. So that's status quo. They haven't changed anything despite all the media murmurings, despite the yield curve, you know, analysts, the market thinking that they're going to rise um, the official cash rate sooner than expected. They said, just steady as she goes. Continue. They'll continue to purchase government securities at the rate of $4 billion a week. $4 billion a week, at least. <clears throat> okay, so when the RBA says something, they're very politically sensitive. And here they've said at least for the next two to three months. Okay, so $4 billion a week. In other words, the government is going to print money and the RBA is going to buy it off them, um, you know, through the bond mechanism at the tune of $4 billion a week. Now, with all, all the stimulus going in, like, that is something that causes hard assets like property to inflate. Like, there's no two ways about it. Um, and they're going to discontinue the target of 10 basis points for the April 2024 Australian government bond. In other words, they're going to say, we still want a 10 basis point target, but if it, you know, sketches around a lot, if it's up and down, if it, um, you know, if it's not quite perfectly 10 basis points, it's not an issue. We're happy for it to go up and down a little bit. This is how the interbank transfer rate works, the, what we call LIBOR, the London Interbank Overexchange Rate. Um, it's how banks lend to each other overnight. So they're saying, look, you know, it doesn't have to be 0.1%, but close enough is, is essentially what they're saying. Now, what I really wanted to, to kind of deep dive on a little bit is what their commentary was, the Reserve Bank's commentary, economic recovery in Australia, um, it's recovering, but they're still very careful about prematurely increasing interest rates because we have another outbreak. You know, it's not expected that the economy can constantly bounce back again and again and again. So the central forecast for GDP growth is 3% over 2021, 5.5%, which is great, over and 2.5% over the following two years. But like I said, the uncertainty continues to be the possibility of further setbacks on the COVID front, right? And here it is. So the central forecast for unemployment rate to trend lower over the next couple of years, reaching four and a quarter percent at the end of 22 and four percent at the end of 2023. Really what the RBA's job is to do is to maintain the interest rate, or sorry, the inflation rate between 2 and 3%. Inflation doesn't really rise structurally until wages grow. And until wages grow, wages don't grow until we reach full employment. Full employment is not 0% unemployment, but rather around 4%. So what they're saying is that wages aren't really going to, you know, have full steam behind them until the end of 2023 when we reach the full unemployment rate or the full employment rate. That's really important because what that means is that 
inf- the interest rate isn't going to rise by, let's say, 2% or 3% or even 1.5% until that time. This is what the RBA has said again and, and again and again. And I know that what everyone's thinking, everyone knows that inflation is happening right now in the Australian economy, but this is what the RBA is saying about it. Inflation has picked up. You know, they're not stupid, but in underlying terms is still low at 2.1%. Remember, their target is 2 to 3%. The headline CPI rate is 3%, yep, but it's being impacted by higher politi- by petrol prices. So petrol price, I don't know, drove by, diesel was like at $1.80, huge. It's because of geopolitical influence in Russia and other places right now. Higher prices for newly constructed homes. There's a timber shortage, you know, primarily COVID shortage um, related and the disruptions in the global supply chains, once again, shipping because of lack of resources, um, once again, because of COVID lockdowns and everything. So inflation is occurring at a headline level at 3%, but largely that is because, or that 0.9% difference between 2.1 and 3, that is because of COVID-related inflation or shortages or bottlenecks. So the RBA doesn't respond to that because COVID's going to go away, hopefully at some point. They respond to underlying inflation. And underlying inflation is still really at the bottom end of their range of 2 to 3%. So the central forecast is for underlying inflation of around 2 and a quarter percent over 2021 and in 2022, um, uh, 2.5% over 2023, right? So 2.5% is really what they want it to be at, and that's only going to occur according to their estimates in 2023. So we've still got a runway of two years before the RBA starts to really pull their hair out and say inflation's out of control. In that two years, they're not, they've said themselves, they're not going to increase interest rates. And they've said that their job is not to control house prices. That's APRA's job, the Australian Prudential Regulatory Authority. So house price growth is not something that the RBA looks at. It looks like uh, it looks at underlying inflation, mostly of which, you know, housing is only one component. So that's really important, right? They're clearly saying again and again and again that we're not going to increase rates by 2% or something dramatically like that. Wage growth is expected to pick up gradually as the labor market tightens. As I've just described before, the tightening is not really happening all the way until 4% unemployment rate, or in other words, full employment 2023 at the end of 2023 the point of this video like i said at the start is really to say if you're looking to buy now buy now if you're thinking should i defer the decision for three months six months the rba has said they're not really doing anything about it for the next one and a half to two years the price movement the momentum that i described earlier and illustrated that's not subsiding in a huge way so buy now don't defer your investment decisions to three months away to six months away do it now um, yes there will be a correction in the market this is not sustainable this kind of growth but it ain't coming anytime soon and if you make another three four hundred thousand dollars you know from now over the next three years and then there's a correction of fifty thousand dollars hey you're still better off okay so if that if that made sense to you that drab that i just described you know please let me know Please share your thoughts in the comments below. Please give it a subscribe. And if you want to really level up and take your learning to the next level, you know, links below to my podcast, 10,000 community Facebook group. Okay, guys, I wish you all the very best. Don't delay your decision. I don't care whether you use me or not, but buy property for investment purposes right now. It'll be the best decision you make. Catch you later.